One of the worst feelings in FRC match play is watching your robot come to a halt. How do I prevent that? In First Box Competition, we have two sets of power distribution products. One that's a couple years old from Cross the Road Electronics, which includes the Power Distribution Panel, or PDP, and Voltage Regulator Module, or VRM. Newer to the scene are the Rev Robotics Power Distribution Hub, or PDH, and Radio Power Module, or RPM. The start of every FRC control system is the battery. There are two things that we really care about when it comes to the battery. The first thing is keeping it charged. You don't want to arrive to a match with an uncharged battery. It may result in lower performance than you're expecting from your robot. The second thing you want to make sure is that all the connections to your battery are super secure and are not going to come loose during a match. If a connection comes loose during a match, you could lose power to your robot, systems could reboot, anything could happen. So make sure to double check those connections regularly, make sure there's no visible wear or anything loose anywhere along that path. When it comes to the Crossel Road Electronics Power Distribution Panel, the battery is connected here underneath this plastic cover with two M6 screws. On the Rev Robotics Power Distribution Hub, the connector is a little bit different. All you need to do is strip back the wires in your battery cable connected into these large Wago connectors. These connections are super robust, but you still want to make sure to give them a big tug test, make sure that everything is good to go. Neither of these power distribution boards require any soldering or tinning of wires to put them into place. Your connections should be placed in each connector so that the individual strands of the wire uh, can fit right into place and make secure connections to everything that you're plugging into these. Regardless of control system, every robot needs one 120 amp breaker. You're going to interact with this a lot while you use your robot. It's essentially your on off button, which means that the connections to this have to be super robust, really tight, and you got to check them often. The number one issue we see with these breakers is these quarter 28 nuts coming a little bit loose, making your battery connection extremely loose to the rest of your robot. So check those frequently, you don't want them loose. Okay, so we've talked about main robot power. Let's talk about the robot radio. There are two ports through which you can provide power to your radio and your robot. There is a barrel connector and a power over ethernet port. We strongly recommend using the power over ethernet port and not the barrel connector. Barrel connector works just fine, uh, but it's not designed for robots moving quickly uh, or any motion really at all. The RJ45 connection that's used through the power over ethernet port is extremely robust and resistant to any sort of motion. We strongly recommend using the power ethernet port closest to the barrel jack. It provides the most consistent data connection to your robot. When using the Cross Road Electronics voltage regulator module to power your radio, you want to make sure that you're plugging into the 12 volt 2 amp part of the board and not the 12 volt 500 milliamp part of the board. The radio nominally only uses 500 milliamps, but in some situations it can use over that. So you want to make sure that you're on the 2 amp compatible part of the board. To connect your radio to the voltage regulator module, you're going to need a passive power over ethernet connector, just like this one. It plugs in just like this over here, and then into your radio, into that port I mentioned earlier, just like so. And that's a really robust, tug-tested connection. This passive injector provides a single robust connection to your radio, which should make your power system a lot easier for your team and a lot less likely to fail in a match. If your team is using the Rev Robotics radio power module, uh, you'll notice that it doesn't have nearly as many ports as the voltage regulator module, which means a lot simpler setup for you and your team. Really, the only connections you need to be worried about with this one is power to the power distribution hub, your ethernet plugged into your Robo Rio, and the ethernet plugged into your radio. There are nice little pictograms on the device to tell you exactly which end to plug into which, and just like with the VRM, plug it into the port closest to the barrel jack on your radio. The heart of the robot is the Robo Rio, and it has a single power connector, this little thing right here. The best way to use this connector is to first remove it from the Robo Rio, insert the two wires up top, tighten through these screw terminals, make sure the connection's really robust, really tight, and then reinsert it into the Rio, and then tighten the two flathead screws on either side of the connector to again make sure that's really tight, really good connection to your Robo Rio. When a robot stops moving on the field, it's most commonly something along the main power path that's become disconnected. That's generally either at the breaker or right at this connection right here. Make absolutely certain that this is tight, robust, and passes the tug test. With the Cross the Road Electronics Power Distribution Panel, the Robo Rio is connected to the VBAT controller power connector at the bottom of the board. This connector is protected by a 10 amp fuse. This 10 amp fuse can come up a little loose every once in a while, just vibrations of the robot can shake it up. You just wanna make sure that before every match you're 
pushing it down, making sure that it's really secure in the power distribution panel. On the rev power distribution hub, it also uses blade fuses. These, similar to the crossover electronics panel, can come a little bit loose after a couple matches. Just make sure you're pressing them down, make sure that they are completely secure before your match. Generally speaking, when a robot stops moving on the field, it's very rarely a component failure. It's regularly just one of these physical connections coming loose. And that is how you keep your FRC robot running in match play.